And, and if you put the film basically with the broad side into the flow, you, you get a uh, you have a body that has a I always mix it up whether it's a low or high ballistic factor, but it's a large area and a low weight, so um, I think that's a low ballistic factor, right? Um, and basically what it does, it, it goes to the reentry in a very benign way, it doesn't have a lot of um, local centralized uh, heat load. Um, by the time it slows down, uh, we, we deploy a pyrofoil, and then the, the plan is to steer it basically and to, uh, to land it on the ship, and I have a picture of that ship too. Before I show you the picture, um, we land them in the water right now. This one looks, for example, um, phenomenal in my eyes. This, this, is just, uh, um, this just went through a re-entry and, um, and, and the landing, and there's, there's no visible damage at all on this, on this, on this piece of equipment. Um, this is the boat. Um, it looks a little bit crazy, but uh, it, it does make sense. Um, there's the, the net, basically. Is, uh, the boat is supposed to go in, 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 in the same direction, and then the, 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 the fairing uh, lands on, on the net, and then gets lowered and uh, taken on board, basically. Uh, the boat is called Mr. Stephen. It's, uh, it's really fast, pretty, pretty fast boat. And um, down here are the, the uh, net deployment tests in the San Pedro Harbor. My house is somewhere on the backside there. Um, the other thing that we, uh, we, we, we cover and fly again is Dragon. Um, I put the Dragon 2 capsule in here. This is the, um, what was it called? Um, I think it was in the board system test uh, that we did two years ago on, uh, on, on Crew Dragon, uh, simply because it looked so much prettier than the other Dragon. It's nice and shiny and not burned up. Uh, parachutes are much nicer too. Um, the, I already mentioned that on Dragon is the only vehicle that can bring significant amounts of payload down from the International Space Station. The trunk is also a unique capability, um, and I explained a little bit why that is. Um, it's um, when you when you put something in the station, you have to go through the, the hatches, and they have a certain size. And if you want to put something outside of the station, it's actually not that easy to do that. Now, the easiest part is to leave it outside and then have the robotic arm go into the trunk and just pull it out and put it somewhere on the, on the, uh, on the station itself. And you can put stuff up there that is way bigger than the hole would be on the hatch. Yeah? Uh, and so we have pills in there that are um, either sensors or ca cameras. Um, there was an HD camera on there that would just transmit what the, the station sees at the moment. So it's not a lot of, we, we, we changed uh, some of the heat uh, not huge change here. I think I forgot exactly about the. Uh, it's basically, all the bigger hardware that's outside of the station um, can be brought up with that um, with that system, and it's, I think it's it's actually really cool. Um, Dragon then and Dragon One actually returns to the west coast um, and is unloaded at the port of Los Angeles and then sent to Texas and then we refurbish it in Texas. Um, we, it's, it's a little bit more work to refurbish Dragon at this point in time because it lands in the salt water. You've got to be, be super careful with that, obviously. But inside, there's a pressure um, pressure container, and that is uh, that can be basically used very easily. The uh, Dragon Two, and that's why I wrote this one, actually lands on the uh, on the east coast. So a True Dragon will land on the other coast. Uh, I think that's a video. I'm not sure which one it is. Right, this is the Dragon Day video. I, I, I just cut that out of um, the other videos. This is the mission control in, in Hawthorne. A little bit of Falcon 9 launches. I just want to show basically what Dragon actually does here. This is the separation. You can see the payloads in the trunk. It's too fast. This is where it, uh, it gets grappled by the station. It doesn't, it doesn't dock, it, uh, it grapples and then it gets berthed. And that's how they attach it basically. Like this. And that's actually is the unbirthing. That's now from the station and, and Dragon leaving. I don't think we have good footage of the landing and I don't think we have to... Um, this one actually is interesting because you can see a little bit the, the angle. We have a leeward and a um, windward side and there's a uh, Dragon flies at, the, at an angle of attack. It's actually inside the uh, lifting body. All right, so this is how the new Dragon looks inside. Um, we're getting close to that. Uh, we, uh, 
we're working hard to get this done this year, but uh, at this time, the, the hardware might be ready. We might still have to do some work on the paper, uh, on paperwork and certification side of it. Um, it's going to be a close call whether we fly this year or not. Uh, that's my second to last one. I wanted to throw BFR in there because I'm probably getting questions from you about BFR. Yeah? Um, I know basic things about BFR. I've seen parts of it. I'm, I'm in awe about the size. I think this is a, an amazing rocket. <laughs> and I think um, the, reason, the reason we build it is actually we need more, more tonnage and, and space in order to get to Mars. And we are serious about going to Mars. And that's why we start building BFR. Um, that is the, uh, that's called the BFS, that's the Big Falcon ship, the other one is the Big Falcon orbit, as you probably know, right? Um, this is Falcon Heavy, and uh, I'll just show you that. That needs some sound. There you go. That's a Tesla. That's a Tesla on the field. That's a Tesla on the Tesla. That thing is pretty big too. To the seats with the clearest view. And she's up to the silver screen. But the film is a sad yesterday what I think is the biggest thing we did in those 15 years and to me it's actually that we got people excited about this that we have people watching launches again that people come there's people that came from all over the world to watch this launch and watching the launch is a little bit like I don't know like uh, oh, where are we are this you never know what's really happening right um, they took the risk they bought the ticket they went there and they camped out there and, uh, and watch this launch. And that's, in my eyes, it's a little bit like how I envisioned how it was in the 60s. And we had Apollo and uh, went to the moon. And so the biggest thing for me is that we actually get people excited, that we, we, have, we have the ability to re-energize this whole thing. Rockets, payloads, economics, it's all important at the end of the day, but getting people excited and getting to the point where we actually all work on this is, in my eyes, way more of an achievement than anything else what we've done. Um, I do want to point out on this video, I think this is uh, the crew did an awesome job putting the video together. Um, the other crew did an awesome job putting the, the Falcon Heavy um, rocket together. It's, uh, we have an amazing crew working in, in, in Hawthorne and at the Cape and Vandenberg and all the other places of SpaceX. And I just want to say, I want to say thank you to those people that uh, joined SpaceX, that helped SpaceX, that are interested in SpaceX. Um, thank you very much. We have some time for questions. Please, um, my hearing is not great, <laughs> so I need you to yell. And, um, and, uh, and I also have only 10 minutes, I think, or maybe even less. Ten minutes. Yes, please. Uh, oh, the question is what are the main obstacles for SpaceX other than the gravity well? Um. <laughs> 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 Good question, actually. 
um, getting a rocket together. So I'll tell you something. We, 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 we are we are privately financed, and I know there's people here that, that, that claim that it's not true, but it's true. We are privately financed, yeah? Obviously, we need private financing. We do not want subsidies. It, help, it keeps us, private money keeps us hungry. Um, we, we do not do um, cost plus, we do not do time plus, uh, whatever these con contacts are called, um, where you basically get a blank check and just, you know, work until it's done. Um, we, we do want to have an upper limit, yeah? And, and we have, um, uh, fixed, uh, what's it called? Fixed, uh, fixed cost contracts, basically. Yeah? I'm not a contract person, obviously. Yeah, and and as long as we keep that spirit, as long as we do that, I, I feel like there are no obstacles. It's just a matter of time to get over it. Uh, yes, please. Oh, you got a microphone. Very good. Okay, uh, so I got a question regarding the uh, Block Five version of the Falcon Nine. The what? Uh, Block Five. Uh, so, how is it uh, performing? Are you happy with the refurbishment uh, and, uh, you know, how, it's, uh, how is the state of the rocket after the flight? Yeah, so I'm, um, I'm actually surprised. Um, the, the logic was a little bit the engine see pretty hot exhaust gas to begin with, yeah? So, putting the engine into, into the flow um, should be fine. I actually watched the, um, the corners on the, on the, um, on the nozzle and, and they look fine. So, I'm, I'm surprised on how well the engines keep up. There are details um, where we see damage um, and we had made adjustments, I would say. That's part of the reason why we have these blocks. We basically roll in changes um, to, to, to do that and to iteratively improve the vehicle. And, and by this point in time, I must say I'm actually pretty happy. Um, I think the rocket is, 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 is really good. There are some uh, some of the hotter re-entries is still something that we work on to perfect them to make sure that at the end the goal is to take the rocket and move it over and launch again. You know, we, we, have, we have the goal of launching basically within two days um, and, and, and that would be tremendous if you do that. Yeah. Uh, so many. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to pick you and you have the microphone. <laughs> So I understand that kerosene is perhaps not the best uh, fuel to use for reusable rockets because it clogs up the engines. I was wondering um, what experiences do you have with the, the engines? What, what do you have yeah. on? So, I mean, this is like a religion basically, right? <laughs> Which fuel do you use? Because at the beginning of this whole enterprise, we actually don't know what the problems are going to be in the end. In terms of kerosene, um, one of the things that's really good with kerosene is it's, it's easy to, to store and um, it's, an, it's a cheap propellant and, um, and it's easy to develop engines with it. Yeah? It's not, when you fuse hydrogen, you have two cryogenics. Um, and, and we felt in the beginning this was too much of a handful. We will obviously going forward um, use, use other propellants when we go to Mars. You need to find something that, uh, you need to have a propellant that works on Mars. Um, methane is, is the obvious choice here. Um, so, I feel a little bit with kerosene we made a decent choice, um, it's a pretty dense propellant, um, it keeps the rocket small um, and it may have on a system level a good system impulse for the first stage, it may not be perfect for the second stage, but honestly I don't think it matters too much if you have the best propellant or not as long as you just, you just scale the rocket up and down, right? Yeah, please, um, you need to move the microphone over there. Thank you. Four and a half years ago, I remind your former president, Mr. Barry Masamori. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so my question is, uh, how can we deal with uh, uh, very complex interaction between the 31 uh, engines of BFR because uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 27 engines are fucking heavy in, school, in, uh, in three groups, not so serious. Thank you. So I didn't understand the question. <laughs> on BFR? So for BFR, there are Wait, many... Take the microphone away. Go. <laughs> For BFR, there are more engines than Falcon Heavy, yes. and not grouped uh, because you see the 27 engines of Falcon Heavy are in three groups with nine each. So the interactions are not so complex. Oh. For the BFR, uh, how can you solve this problem? Do, will, will you perform some ground tests uh, oh, yeah. to ensure this? Thank you. So the engine interaction was, was a big deal on Falcon 9 too, and we just tested it and it's fine. 
So I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, we will test this on a big scale, yeah. And if you see interaction, we move the engines left and right, yeah. This obviously, there's two ways to, to deal with this problem. You can do an analysis, and and you know we, we do analysis to to make sure we don't make any gross mistakes, yeah. But then in reality, we always test it before we fly, and that's actually that's actually the more important um, parameter. On on um, there's certain things that you can't test, and then obviously you have to rely on analysis only, but in terms of engines, the number um, we we haven't seen too many too many problems in Flight Nine. We don't anticipate that this is going to be uh, that that much of an issue. And it's also the engines are sequenced too. You know? There's a, not all engines are running at the same time, so there, there's a difference. Uh, there's, there's there's engines that are used for entry, engines that are used for ascent. Yeah? So there's a little bit of more detail in there. So we do this one over there. When you return using the, the BFS from the moon, you come in at Mach 30. Do you anticipate any problems with the re-entry re survivability? Um, I don't really anticipate a, a, um, problems because of the Mach number. The Mach number is only one factor. What counts is actually the heat flow, um, and the heat flux rather, and and that is much more dependent on um, how you how you use the vehicle in the flow, basically, or how you how you Put it in the flow. Yeah, um, there's a lot of detail that needs to be worked out, and um, we have experience with heat shields. We um, have been flying Dragon. Dragon actually is, is designed to, to go around the moon and do the same thing, um, which was an overkill for um, for what we do right now. But on the heat shield, we, we felt um, we rather make it too thick, and then we shave it as we, we get um, get more experience. And I'm pretty sure we're going to do the same thing on. on on BFS, we, we're going to start thick, and then we're going to we're going to trim it down as we find out how much we actually use. Yeah. All right, th thank you very much. Um, appreciate your time, and uh, and have a great uh, great conference here. Die Pressekonferenz? Achso, nein, ich glaube, die Pressekonferenz ist einfach nur ein Platz.